Hello and welcome to UDL in 15 minutes where educators discuss their experiences with UDL. I'm Louie Lord Nelson, UDL author and leader. Today I'm talking with Daphne Hereford, a visual communication design teacher at Rogers High School in Toledo, Ohio. Today Daphne is going to share how she uses UDL to decide what she needs to do and then what tools she needs to use to meet that goal. Hi Daphne, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Great, great. So can you share a little bit about Rogers High School? Sure. Um, Rogers High School is in Toledo, Ohio, and we have um, roughly 600 students. Uh, we have a few different career technology programs, and mine is one of them. It's called Visual Communication Design, but for short, we call it VCD. Okay. And you were explaining to me that instead of having like separate career centers, that, that the high schools just spread these programs out. Is that correct? Yes. So um, there are, I think, about five or six high schools in the district, and each location has a couple of career technology offerings, and students are allowed to choose from their home school, or they can travel to the various other offerings throughout the district. Okay. And then is this, are these inclusive? Are all the offerings available to any student that wants to go into those programs? Uh, pretty much. Some of them start at different grade levels, so that kind of determines which programs you're going to be eligible for. Mine, for example, is a freshman have an optional introductory course that teaches them like Word, Microsoft Office basics. Then as a sophomore, it's another optional year-long course called Visual Media, where they learn the basics of design to just kind of get them excited. And the actual career tech program starts for their junior year, and it's a two-year program. Okay. So are those freshman and sophomore courses, are those mandatory to go into the junior year one? No. I mean, they're recommended, but we can take anybody, you know, that has not taken those courses into our junior year program. Nice. Okay. So tell us a little bit about your teaching background, too. Uh, so I, this is uh, almost my 20th year, give or take of teaching. And when I started out, I was teaching as an industrial technology teacher, but my true passion has always been visual communication design. So I was fortunate that about eight years ago, this position opened up at Rogers and so excited to get the job because it's my dream job. I'm able to teach the things that I love and be around programs and the software and the Mac computers. Nice. So 20 years ago, you went into industrial technology. Did you just go straight into that? So I actually, I mean, if I go way back, I started taking college classes when I was in high school and they were in um, graphic design and that related field. So I knew that I've always loved this um, industry. I went to college, uh, started taking classes to go into that career field, did some internships and realized that while I love the industry, I didn't like the deadline, the pace that um, you would have to work. So I decided that if I went into education, I would be able to be around what I love, but still have a schedule that was manageable for me to have a family and you know, a personal life. Yeah. So I just transitioned while I was in school, went on and got my master's in education so that then I could go into teaching. Perfect. Well, that's fabulous. Well, I am really excited to talk to you about how UDL has changed the way that you teach. I mean, you've been teaching for so long. And then because you teach about really cool stuff with the graphic design and everything, we know that this is stuff that students are already choosing to learn or it's, it's stuff that they really want to do and they're drawn to. But how have you identified how UDL has shifted the way that you're planning? And, and do you have any examples? Yeah, definitely. When I took the professional development course on UDL, I was able to start to think about what I needed to accomplish with my students in the classroom and what I was missing. And so then I was able to go in and plug in some of the tools that I had learned in the UDL class to be able to answer those needs. So, for example, I knew that I needed to cover terminology better with my students because any professional has their own language. Um, and so in graphic design, that's just like any other professional career. There are terms and words that we use that maybe the general public doesn't understand. So 
in UDL, I learned some tools that we could use to kind of get those terms more in front of the students to get them something that they're more familiar with and using regularly. Yeah. So you did some more unique things with those terms than you had done before. So share about that. So I, I just had so much fun learning all of the different ways that I could present the work to the students, I guess you could say. One thing that I knew that I needed was a word wall. So I went through my terminology and came up with a list of words that I uh, wanted the kids to be familiar with and to be able to use and understand their definitions. So I printed each one out so that each student could then be assigned their own word. And then they would have to do a little bit of research on that word, find a visual representation, either that they drew or something that they found online, a definition. And they also had to like ask a question and then answer the question related to the term. So just kind of like really thoroughly covering each term. And then we hung those words up on the wall so that then they could also serve to be something that would remind the students in the future. Nice. What I really love about your example is that you just went all the way down the principle of representation. So when I think about perception, that you were helping them perceive those words in different ways. They had a word that they were assigned to, but then they could hear it and read it, see it. They were understanding the language and the symbols. They were starting to break down and understand what this vocabulary means, and then And they were going out and finding those symbols and those representations of those words. And then you went all the way down to comprehension because now they needed to ask questions about that term and then be able to answer that. So you just went right down and helped build their own knowledge base about those words. But then you gave them a platform to learn how to be resourceful in finding that information. And it was just, I love that example. It's fabulous. Thank you. So is there another piece that you have that talks about the students just learning about the graphic design or how they experience moving through a unit? Along with the uh, word wall, I took those same handouts that had the individual words printed because I feel like the repetition helps students to remember. And so I crumpled up each of the words into what a lesson called an onion skin so that then the kids could hold the words in their hands and we stood in a circle and you go around the group and each person peels away one of the terms from the larger crumpled up ball and then they have to kind of see if they remember what the definition is and so that was like a fun game that got the kids out of their seats holding the words in their hands again uh, reviewing the words again and so it was kind of a revisiting of the terminology that we've already used in the classroom and been experiencing throughout the course. Yeah, that's great. That's that's awesome. Well, you, like so many others across our nation and the world, have moved into this uh, digital offering where you're doing the distance learning. And how has that changed things? And, and what have you shifted? And, and how has UDL helped you with that? So last year, as I was going through the UDL class, we started to find that the students were struggling with reading the written directions and some of the training tutorials that they were doing. And so we, uh, myself and the other teacher that teaches along with me, decided to start videotaping ourselves, doing the lessons, and then providing those videos for the students. And that was really cool because there were some students that then chose to continue on with the books. They had gotten used to it that way and they they were working well that way. But there were other students that really got to do more work and appreciated having the videos provided as an additional option to to getting their work completed. Did you like use Screencastify? How did you capture those? I heard about Screencastify this school year, but last year we actually, because we have Macs, have QuickTime, there's an ability to record your screen right through the Mac software that's provided with the operating system. But yeah, you could use anything like a Screencastify type application to record your screen. And then um, as as I had time, I would add maybe some simple titles in Adobe Premiere or some intro and outro music so that it, it makes it a little bit more interesting for the students to watch the videos. 
Yeah, a little bit more engaging. So understanding that you created those for all learners, did you find that you had to explain that to the students and say, look, anybody can watch these videos. You don't have to read the text. You can watch these too. Yes, I did. And it's surprising because it, it, it really didn't matter whether the, whether a student had maybe some um, learning difficulties or not. They They just had a certain preference. So certain students opted to use the provided books and other students just preferred to hear my voice and walk them through it and the visual part of the video that when they couldn't find something, they could see me doing it and that helped them. Nice. And then I know you had one other example of how students could, you could get to know them and then also use that tool for them showing you what they know. So kind of in that action expression, but also engagement. And um, I think it was, is it Linuit? I definitely um, was excited to try Linuit when I heard about it because uh, Linuit is a virtual post-it note bulletin board. And so I was just thinking again back to what is it that I need from my students and then what tool can I use to accomplish this? And so I wanted to get to know my kids and I had um, gone to a a conference where they had an icebreaker and we had to tell what our theme song would be, like what's the song that motivates us. And so in Linuit, I posted a sticky note, a virtual sticky note with that same question. What's your theme song? What song would motivate you? And then I also had them go and find the YouTube link so that we could listen to the music because I figured some of the kids were going to be sharing songs that maybe I didn't necessarily know. It was a way for us to create community, seeing what music we had in common or what style of music we had in common, but it was also a way to kind of share who we were personally. So that was a lot of fun. It is. That's awesome. I've loved all your examples because you, you're starting from that premise of what do my students need so they can participate in this lesson? And so you're coming at it from that design point of view and understanding, you know what the goal is, you know what you want them to learn, but then you're saying, what, what do they need? What, what supports, which is the other way of saying what barriers are there. And then your next step is to think about the different tools that you have available to you. And it's just a fabulous way to go at this. It's just wonderful. So do you have any other things on the horizon that you're thinking about, kind of next steps with your students as you're in this world of distance learning and and using UDL? I'm just looking forward to um, sharing more of these tools that I've learned. Um, Animoto is one where the students can create videos. And I think it's just so cool that what I teach them, they can also use in other classes and for other purposes. So I, I think it's really exciting the possibilities, what they're learning with me. Yeah, that's really awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for this. It's always wonderful to have any teacher, but I also love having teachers who are in the the tech world or they're outside of our regular classes because it helps others realize that we all need to be implementing the framework in any of our courses. And you just do a wonderful job of modeling that. Thank you so much. Thank you. So for those listening to this podcast, you can find supplemental materials like an image montage with closed captioning, that montage with audio descriptions, a transcript, and an associated blog at my website, which is www.theudlapproach.com forward slash podcasts. And finally, if you have a story to share about UDL implementation for UDL in 15 minutes, you can contact me through theudlapproach.com. And thanks to everyone for your work in revolutionizing education through UDL and making it our goal to develop expert learners.